In a move to enhance government efficiency, President Bola Tinubu has directed the implementation of the long-awaited Oronsai report. This decision, part of the resolutions at the second Federal Executive Council meeting for the year, includes mergers, subsumptions, and relocations of various government agencies. Our State House correspondent, Adesua Moran, has more on this, and the government's plan to restart uh, direct payments to households. The Oronsaria Report, commissioned in 2011 by then-President Goodluck Jonathan, aims to eliminate redundancy in the public service. Chaired by former head of the civil service, Stephen Oronsoye, it proposed merging and abolishing various government agencies to streamline operations, reduce costs, and enhance efficiency. However, these recommendations remained on paper for 12 years, with successive governments failing to implement them. Today, the Federal Executive Council, chaired by President Bola Tinubu, has decided to act. So in a very bold move, today, this administration, under the leadership of President Bola Ame Tinubu, consistent again with his courage to take very far-reaching decisions in the interest of Nigeria, has taken a decision to implement the so-called Orosaye uh, report. Now, what that means is that uh, a number of agencies, commissions, and some departments have actually been scrapped. Some have been merged, while others have been subsumed. Others, of course, have also been moved from some ministries to others where government feels they will operate better. How will this impact job security? The whole idea is not to throw people out of jobs. This is not the whole idea. The whole idea is to create efficiency and also make it possible for government to save funds where necessary. Notable measures include the National Agency for Control of AIDS, merging with the Center for Disease Control, and the Federal Radio Corporation merging with the Voice of Nigeria. Additionally, agencies like the National Salaries, Income and Wages Commission will be subsumed into the Revenue Mobilization and Fiscal Commission. Hadiza Bala Husman, the Special Advisor to the President on Policy Coordination, provides an extensive list of affected agencies, highlighting that a committee chaired by the Secretary to the Government of the Federation will ensure swift implementation. The committee would look at the administrative restructuring and also the legislative amendments required to ensure the full implementation of the recommendations. The other aspects of um, recommendations that have also been passed to the committee to relook at. It's important for us to um, appreciate the bold um, approval granted by Mr. President at the Federal Executive Council. This has been um, a recommendation that has been, I think, in the Nigerian discourse from 2012. And we're here in 2024 and it's so been approved and the aspect that are applicable to mergers, as I said, subsuming and scrapping and relocation of agencies are those that have been so considered arising from the totality of the panel report. Amid economic challenges, the special presidential panel reviewing the National Social Investment Programme has submitted its report to President Tinubu. Led by the Finance Minister, the panel recommends the immediate resumption of direct payments to households, targeting 12 million households and 60 million Nigerians. However, questions arise about how identified issues will be addressed for proper beneficiary verification. What we're looking to do here is the triangulation of this data set to ensure that not only are we using uh, the register that is properly, properly been, been uh, uh, populated, but that we also do proper verification of every individual that will benefit from, from that investment, uh, that social investment program, which means we will give commitment to ensuring that no one is paid twice because you have to be properly ID'd before you can benefit from, from that program. The, the beneficiary, their account, their NIN, their BVN, and of course at the end of the day, where the payment actually lands, the account or the um, mobile wallet, 
So that's the big difference. This time, it is with integrity and with uh, transparency and accountability. Approvals reached at the meeting extend to other sectors, including works and education. We had the, the approval of uh, fake for the construction of 700 kilometer of coastal route running from Lagos through the nine coastal routes or states uh, up to uh, Cross River. The Federal Executive Council's actions on the Orosonian report signifies a shift in Nigeria's governance. However, the key now lies in meticulous implementation and sustained oversight to ensure transparency and accountability. From the presidential villa, Adesua Omoruan, Arise News. Right, Rufai. Uh, is it 12 years later? And here we are with regards to another implementation, a move to implement the Stephen Orosai report. Your thoughts on this? Anyway, the government got a distraction because this morning we are talking about the Orosai report. We're not talking about the strike by NLC. So they got the distraction they wanted. But I think this Orosai report talk is just a very big distraction. And I'll prove it to you. In 2014, and these are empirical facts based on some reactions I have got. Uh, in 2014, there was a report on the 10th of April, I think it was Daily Trust, that said the president directed secretary to the government of the Federation, Ayin Payasin, and Alaji Boni Aji, the constituted committee uh, for implementation of this report. The Minister of Information, Labramaku, said Jonathan issued this at a Federal Executive Council meeting. Like just this one, Federal Executive Council meeting. That's on the 14th, on uh, the 10th of April, 2014. Also, when you also check, and these are empirical facts, you can go fact check me and research them. Uh, on the 30th of April 2020, this same report, this time by President Muhammadu Buhari, uh, there was also another story making the rounds as regards implementation of this same report. Yes, President Muhammadu Buhari has appro approved the implementation of a report submitted by the Presidential Committee on Restructuring, blah, 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 commonly known as the Ronsoye Report. Approved implementation. So we've approved this implementation twice. So when President Sinubu says approved implementation, hence the skepticism. Also, another reaction I've been getting is the fact that, oh, a lot of people, even you, Rufai, have talked about the fact that, yes, implement the Orosa report. The reason why we say implement the Orosa report is that it's a benchmark for cutting cost of government. But the report is no longer fit for purpose. And I'll give you facts this morning. As at the time the report was made, about 12 years ago, there were 541 government parastatals. The report says cut 220 of them to be able to say save 800 billion. Ah, you could do well to ask me this morning in this debate, how many government parastatals do we have today? We have 1,316 and counting today. That's to show you the report is no longer fit for. So how many are you going to cut based on what was on ground before? Then the report gave you a benchmark that if you cut 220 after 541, you were going to save over 800 billion. So how many percent are they going to cut? And when you look at it critically, they are still adding more government currency out. The bill for the Southwest Development Commission has passed second reading, thereabouts. They are still creating more government agencies and commissions. Then President Tinubu all of a sudden remembers that he needs to go to the Rosary report now. But this was President Tinubu that had close to 50 ministers that increased the size of the cabinet. Wasn't he thinking of the Rosary report then? Was that not adding one way or the other to the cost of government? This was President Tinubu that had a very big contingent to cop. That's, that's what it add to the cost of government? This was President Tinubu won 60 million to lawmakers that we all complain about. Is that not adding to the cost of government? Furthermore, in 2017, Vice President Yemi, no, President Yemi Oshibajo, Acting President Yemi Oshibajo then signed an executive order, you know, for efficiencies of these MDAs to cut, you know, wastages and things like that. How well has that been implemented? This administration, President Tinubu said Hadiza Balahusman should be sort of like the principal, the head girl for all the MDAs and government, and they said they were going to get a scorecard. Where's the scorecard for the ministers till date? Where is even the scorecard for the MDAs? The President Tinubu now used these same MDAs that all of a sudden we are talking about cutting to dispense political favors when he just came in. So the question is, we are not saying we shouldn't cut cost of government, but we need to look at where the cost is coming from 
And we need to be able to introspect properly to be able to streamline, to be able to cut this recurrent expenditure. And we need to tell ourselves the truth, not just this announcement every time of approved to implement. We've had three approved to implement now. Those are the facts on ground. You could check it up. And that's what we are seeing in this conversation. For cutting cost of government, I think they should start from themselves. What cost is President Tinubu going to cut in the presidency budget as we speak? We talked about cars for the First Lady. Why do we need to buy cars for the First Lady? What cost are they going to cut in the National Assembly budget? The National Assembly was trying to build another 12 billion naira library. And we keep talking about AI. You could put that library in the cloud for them and give them access code to it. Why build another structure for about 12 billion? We've seen in this last budget many multiple projects that are being repeated and all of that. Those are the ways to cut cost of governance. So not this... Uh, Announcement that like we normally do every time. Every, it's a seasonal thing. Every day, every government must talk about a Russell report. I'm sure if is not taking the next administration, we'll talk about a Russell report. report. Okay. okay. The Russell report, for those who have uh, taken time to look at it, is an 800-page report. And it's important to stress the objective of that report. The objective is to have lean government, to make government more efficient plug wastages and leakages in government. Lean government, not a fat uh, government. And that also a report when it was submitted in 2020, 2012, you know, the panel said between 2012 and 2015, if implemented, the Nigerian government will be able to save a total of 862 billion naira by reducing, you know, uh, 541 agencies to 220, right? Yeah. Now, now, the implication of that was that at the end of the day, about 102 heads of agencies and parastators will have lost their jobs as a result of that rationalization. But in any case, when the report was submitted, the Jonathan administration then set up a white paper committee, which was led by Mohamed Bello Adoke as, in his capacity as Attorney General uh, of the Federation and Minister of Justice at the time. That uh, white paper committee submitted its report, accepted some of the recommendations, rejected some, and there was a commitment on the Jonathan administration side to implement the report. And that was why in 2014, there was talk about, you know, going ahead to implement. But then, of course, it was close to election season. But what we realized at the time was that one, there are administrative processes to be taken, which the Jonathan administration comments. And again, many of the parastators and agencies were creations of law. So you still need to go to the National Assembly, you know, to amend the act and all of that. And the third uh, thing that we learned also was territoriality. People lobbying, not wanting their parastators or agencies uh, to be merged or subsumed. Because you see, if you're a minister in a certain ministry, you probably have about 28 parastators under you. The effect is that, you know, you may end up with just about 14. So there was also that polit political side to it. But in any case, the Jonathan administration did not win in 2015. So we left government. Now the uh, Buhari administration took over. In 2021, the Buhari administration set up two committees. One committee led by, uh, I think, Goni Aji, I think that's his name, former, you know, uh, head of service, to take another look at the same report that the Jonathan administration left behind. And then there was another, you know, uh, committee led by Ama Pepo, Mrs. Ama Pepo, who was in our government, the, that's the Jonathan administration, to look at agencies that have been established since 2014, 2015, because after, you know, new agencies came up. Now, after those two committees submitted their report to the Buhari administration, a, another white paper committee was set up, led by um, another former head of service, Mrs. Ebele Okeke, and that panel also submitted this report. That was in 2022. But as it turned out, the Buhari administration uh, did not proceed to implement that report. But the argument has always been on the table in this country that, look, we need a lean government. And now, all of a sudden, the uh, 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 Tinubu administration has discovered the Onosaye uh, report. On the surface of it, I think it's first important for the Tinubu administration to understand the main purpose of that report, lean government. 
And that is why people have been pointing out in the last 24 hours the contradictions, that this is a government that has 48 uh, ministries, or there are about 48 ministers. So you started by bloating the governance, uh, you know, by having a bloated uh, government process. Second thing is that in terms of cost cutting, you know, we see ministers going about with uh, big convoys. We see National Assembly members leaving it up. You know, so in terms of style, you know, the optics do not match the objective of that particular uh, report. Now, let me quickly make some conclusive statements. One, the news out there is that there will be a full implementation of your own SIA report. <laughs> the people <laughs> saying full implementation, they have not read that report. There is nothing called full implementation because of the uh, processes involved. And you cannot do that in two, 12 weeks. That, that's not possible. So to begin the process, you have to look at the exigencies of today. You have to look at the realities of today. Number two is that it is important not to politicize the process. It's not by playing to the gallery. We're going to do full implementation of uh, an outside report. No, when you study the report, you see that there is a lot in it than full implementation in 12, 12 months. But there are low-hanging fruits. And those low-hanging fruits are uh, the administrative uh, processes that the Tinubu uh, government can quickly you know, put in place. But the legal part of it is something that is going to take uh, quite a number of time. I've seen some of the list of things that they have provided. They also have to watch out for the guardian syndrome. What is called the guardian syndrome? It means that people resist change. And that's one of the things we saw in our time. There will be ministers that will start lobbying, that will not want their ministries to be reduced. And there are some other ministries in the light of present realities that they may see have to merge. Take the Ministry of Arts and Culture, which has about um, is it 11 agencies or so. Now, they, they are just merging two, the National Theatre and the National True, the National Gallery, and the, I think the uh, 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 Museum and Monuments. Look, the Arts and Culture Ministry, you probably don't need more than five agencies, and so on and so forth. But to think that this can be done in 12 weeks, no, it cannot happen in 12 weeks. But the political will is important. We hope that this is not an attempt to distract public attention because one of the strategies in the governance process is that when people, when you have big issues that you are dealing with, inflation, NLC strike, what you do is you just throw a ball to yes, the people, ma give them something to talk about, about. <laughs> to, to reassure the people that we are trying, we are doing something. I hope this is not that kind of strategy, but it's a standard strategy in government. Mm. All right, so perhaps a 12-week timeline is so that it, it coincides with the first anniversary of this administration, so that there's something um, said to be tangible that this administration would celebrate as part of their one year in, in, in office. So that would be May um, 29, 2024. However, a number of things have been said in terms of some of the things that must happen or take place for this, um, you know, for this announcement to take reality or to be reality. Yesterday, only yesterday, we talked about the new um, setup of a tripartite committee on an economic advisory committee. So, Dr. Abati, you might just be well, very well right on the money in terms of different announcements making headlines to demonstrate that this administration or that the government is working. However, this morning, I want to give the government the benefit of the doubt. I say this because... Um, at the end of the day, when government has seen what is going on and the calls, because that's the point of um, advocacy, that's the point of conversations, that's the point of public discourse to get the government to take action. As part of this, this announcement seems to be a response to Nigerians' call for them to, um, to promote a lean government, especially in light of um, econom current economic realities. And so it's a very welcome development. I'll speak on that, term, on that line. However, um, 12 weeks, too short a time, but there are a few announcements that have already been made in the immediate as two agencies that will be scrapped, some agencies that will be um, sub subsumed, some agencies that will be merged. And so our responsibility from this um, point on is to hold the government to account and to ensure that the, what they are announcing or the things that have been said will be fully implemented. Aside from, of course, the other things. Miss, Mrs. Amma Peppel, that was mentioned, had said at the time when she chaired the, um, the White Paper Committee that in order to make this successful, in order to implement you know, this, um, the, the Oversight Report, 
the National Assembly must also be involved because a number of these agencies, as I've been mentioned, are, cre are creations of law. And as some of them, in the making of the laws, there were flaws even in them in terms of the provisions made for how they, they would be set up, despite the nomenclature as commissions, as boards, yet not a provision as detailed enough to justify them as such. And so for this to succeed, the National Assembly as well must be brought on board to ensure that where, where um, you know, there needs to be a modification or perhaps an amendment of a particular law in order to activate that particular ministry, um, a particular um, agency being subsumed, then that has to be done. Now let's look at the, um, um, the, the size of this government. If the president is serious about demonstrating to the people that he's now ready to run a lean government. We've talked about the fact that it must start, charity must begin at home. First of all, all those retinues of SSAs that we are not hearing anything about them, who honestly are, are there, but we cannot see that duplicating efforts. We have a number of SSAs for media, social media, and they are overlapping functions. Sometimes they create jobs for themselves so that they, become, they are still relevant and justify their paycheck at the end of the month. That needs to be looked into. Last week, I looked at the fact that there are some ministers that we haven't heard anything from since they took office. A number of ministries like that, all those ministries that have a minister of state, look into them. The, 45, the 48 number of ministers can be further reduced. So if the president is looking at running a lean government and talking about implementing the Orosai report, he must demonstrate his willingness to, um, to streamline his government by starting from his kitchen cabinet. <laughs>